Project Guru. 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 Всем привет! С вами Зак Новак на радио станции Новорусия Rocks. Welcome to Новорусия Rocks radio station. This is Zach Novak, your American in downtown Donetsk. Program is called Project Guru. Guru is always in the house, as always. Guru, thank you so much for all the hard work that you do. Andre, my engineer, is here as well. Let's go to it. Serbia, an explosive device was thrown and automatic weapons were fired at a sports hall in northern Kosovo on Sunday, some 12 hours before Serbian Prime Minister Aleksandar Vucic was due to visit, Serbian media reported. The blast occurred outside a hall of Zubin Potok at around 3 a.m. as workers were setting up a stage where Vucic was to make a speech. The state-run news agency Danug reported. A vehicle parked nearby was damaged and some hall windows were broken, but there was no casualty. The region, which lies in northern Kosovo near the border with Serbia, is populated mostly by ethnic Serbs whose relations with the ethnic Albanian majority are tense. Ethnic Albanian, those are the KLA, the terrorists. Kosovo is always Serbian. The Serbian Prime Minister, who faces early parliamentary elections on April 24th, arrived in the region on Sunday for a visit to a mine for the speech later at Zubin Potok. Marko Judic, the head of the Serbian government office for Kosovo, told Region N1 television from Kosovo that there were no immediate plans to change Vucic's schedule following the blast. But the final decision on whether Vucic would make the speech will be determined in agreement with security forces. Judic did not elaborate as to the possible perpetrators of the attack. Kosovo, a former southern province of Serbia that is populated mostly by ethnic Albanians, declared independence in 2008, although Serbia does not recognize its sovereignty. Vucic visits northern Kosovo several times a year. The authorities in Pristina, Kosovo's capital, did not comment at a reported incident. Kosovo will always be Serbian. War unleashes again with a fury. Nagoro Karabakh worse since 94. Heavy fighting and disputed Nagorno-Karabakh on Friday night and into Saturday left at least 33 people dead, including 18 Armenian and 12 Azerbaijani soldiers. The fighting was the worst since 94 ceasefire, and despite Azeri calls for unilateral truce, fighting is continuing throughout the weekend. Nagorno-Karabakh has a complicated history. The Karabakh became a protectorate of Russia in 1805, and the Knet was dissolved, joining the Russian Empire in 1822. With the establishment of the Soviet Union and the creation of the Armenian and Azerbaijan SSR, the status of Nagorno-Karabakh became contested between the two. The Soviets attempted to resolve the fighting by making Nagorno-Karabakh an autonomous oblast with Azerbaijan, though fighting continued with efforts to see the oblast transferred to Armenia. The Soviets offered increased autonomous, but the fighting just continued until the Soviet Union ultimate collapse. Independent as of 91, Armenia and Azerbaijan immediately started fighting over the region, with three years of conflict ending in a ceasefire. The 94 ceasefire left Nagorno-Karabakh in a contested state with an Armenian-backed independent republic established but unrecognized, and Azerbaijan still retaining its legal claims over the land. That situation has remained largely unchanged since, though Azerbaijan has complained about Armenia's systematic settlement of ethnic Armenia into the region in an attempt to further and hence their hold on it. This includes reports of a large chunk of Syria's displaced Armenian minority being resettled in Nagorno-Karabakh. Both sides are blaming the other for starting this latest dust-up, with Azerbaijan reporting shelling from the region hitting their border villages and Armenia claiming Azerbaijani just attacked for no reason. Either way, Azerbaijan fairly quickly gained some advantage and took part of the region back under control. This is complicating the ceasefire push for while the international community is backing the notion of ending the battle, pro-Armenian forces within the Karabakh insisting they would only accept a ceasefire that returned all lost territory back to them. A resumption of the war between Azerbaijan and Armenia could seriously threaten regional stability as their conflicts have tended to take on religious tone. Armenia is overwhelmingly Christian, while Azerbaijan is vast majority Shiite Muslim. Guru, back to Armenia, but listen to this. Another Washington involvement. A carry visit and war breaks out in Nagorno-Karabakh. The Nagorno-Karabakh situation whereby a territory that the UN recognizes as part of Azerbaijan is under the control of an unrecognized autonomous government backed by Armenia has sat unresolved and rarely spoken of 22 years. The resumption of hostilities this weekend, however, comes just days after Secretary of State John Kerry spoke to Azeri President Iham Aliyev 
calling for an ultimate resolution to the conflict. Kerry made it clear he wanted a diplomatic settlement, but that still doesn't mean his comments didn't play a role in precipitating these new hostilities. If it convinced Aliyev that the U.S. isn't going to allow the status quo to remain in place, the nagar karabakh situation is complex, but the U.S. interest seems primarily in resolving it in spite Russia, seeing Russia as using the standoff as leverage to keep itself tied to both nations, particularly Armenia. It's clear the U.S. sees a quick and clean resolution as undercutting Russian interests, but the dispute has a solid century of history underpinning it, and there's no practical solution that's going to satisfy all parties. Hence, an end to the standoff is largely predicated on one side or the other imposing it militarily. That's a war that could rapidly spread far beyond the Karabakh. however. Armenia has heavy Russian backing and a significant Russian military presence for defensive purposes. The primary reason isn't Azerbaijan itself, but Turkey, which is a close ally to Azerbaijan, does doesn't care for Armenia at all and could quickly get involved if war breaks out. Turkey's involvement would all but oblige Russia to back Armenia, turning this into a major regional war. Turkey's NATO membership could rapidly escalate it even further. The U.S. isn't necessarily anti-Armenian, but has major business interests in Azerbaijan's energy sector, which would likely oblige them to back Turkey's play. The 22-year status quo didn't really satisfy anyone or open a path for resolution but may have been better than the alternative, a dangerous and costly war. Guru, really quick, really cool, Russian marathon in the center of Donetsk. More than 50 citizens of Donetsk took part in a Russian marathon for the Healthy Lifestyle campaign. The distance was more than three kilometers. The initiator of the campaign was deputy of DPR People's Council, Andrei Pushkin. Group of enthusiasts ran from the main square of DPR's capital to the government house, then the final destination to Shermakova Park, where they finished the marathon. Participants stopped several times to do exercises. Tasks of the runners was co complemented with slogans that were shouted out. For instance, Donetsk is Russian city. Donetsk is sober city. Russian city means sober city, sober. Parents, healthy, children campaign. Drivers passed by honking horns, supported the participants. The next marathon is planned, planned in May, dedicated to the victory. Victory Day, and of course, more people to be involved. War crimes. Nazi Kiev forces launched 20 mortars at the village of Spartak this morning at 9.30, approximately at the same time the airport was shelled. The enemy used mortars of 120 and 82 caliber gor guru. Again, atrocities, war crimes. Using, again, mortars of 120 and 82 caliber on civilian areas. Receiving information was added that the shelling was carried out from positions occupied of Diyevka. The information investigation concerning wounded and the destruction is still ongoing. It was earlier reported by the DPR Defense Ministry that the Nazi Ukrainian side indiscriminately shelled civilian areas, shelling civilian areas 170 times for the last 24 hours. War crimes by the Poroshenko regime, backed by the Obama Gestapo regime. Let me bring in my lovely co-host Natalia. More news from Novorussia and around the world. Perfect news for our Republic. Universities of Belarus accept students with DPR and LPR certificates. Citizens of the Donetsk People's Republic and Lugansk People's Republic will enter universities according to common provisions. The decree of the Belarusian president dated from 30 August 2014 explains that students of the republics will take part in the concourse of for state-funded places together with students of Belarus. It was reported by Belarus site Belsat. Patriarch of Rome is gathering money for Ukrainians. Patriarch of Rome Francis announced about collect donations to people suffered as a result of conflict in Ukraine. Pope addressed with a request to all Catholics of Europe to help to Ukrainians. I call all believers to join this initiation and to make contribution, the Pope stated in time of the church service in Vatican. Pope has a hope that peace in the country will be established soon. My thoughts are directed to all peoples that want living in peace, particularly I think that about events here in Europe, about tragedy of people who have been exhausted with sequences of violence in Ukraine, about those people who have been shocked with actions as a result of which several thousands of people died, and about million people who were to leave their land because of sharp situation that is still now, Patriarch of Rome added. Sport news from our Republic. Russian scamper 
in the center of Donetsk. More than 50 dwellers of Donetsk took part in the Russian scamper. For the healthy lifestyle, the distance was more than three kilometers. The initiator of the campaign was the deputy of the DPR's People's Council, Andriy Pushkin. Group of enthusiasts ran from the main square of the DPR's capital to the government house. Then they destined to the Sherbakov Park, where they finished the scamper. Participants stopped several times to do exercises. Task of runners was complicated with slogans that were to be shouted by them. For instance, Donetsk is Russian city. Donetsk is sober city. Russian city means sober city. Sober parents, healthy children. Drivers passed by supported participants. The next scamper is planned in May, dedicated to the Victory Day. More people would be involved. Join us! Breaking news! Hawaii recognizes Nagoro Karabakh. The Hawaii State Legislature adopted a resolution on Tuesday recognizing the independence of the Republic of Nagoro Karabakh, HR 167, titled Honoring and Recognizing Nagoro Karabakh Republic, resolves that the House of Representatives of the 28th Legislature of State of Hawaii, regular session of 2016, recognizes Nagoro Karabakh Republic and encourages the international community to recognize Karabakh as a free, independent, and sovereign democracy. David Babai Spokesman for the NKR president stated that the resolution adopted by Hawaii State Legislature is one more significant step in international recognition of independent Artsakh, which is a victory of the Armenian people. According to him, it is a great political and legal moral victory which stems from national values and special respect for Artsakh. We believe that is one more significant victory of the Armenian people and one more significant step in international recognition of independent Artsakh. It is our common victory as it has been built up due to our unity, Armenia Artsakh diaspora. It is noteworthy that the state of Hawaii is the first to recognize independent Artsakh in a geographical area and this is a great event. Babayan stated, Hawaii is the seventh U.S. state to have recognized the independence of NKR following Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Louisiana, Maine, California, and Georgia. Six Turkish Nazi special forces killed in Kurdistan, southeast of Turkey. Five Nazi Turkish soldiers and one special forces police officer killed Saturday in a bomb attack blamed on the Kurdish militants in the southeast of the country. The members of the security forces were carrying out a military operation in Nusabin in the southeastern Maridin province when a bomb left by rebels from the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, was detonated, it said. Nusabin has been under curfew since mid-March for a military operation to push the PKK out of town, where the authorities say the group dug trenches and put up barriers. The new attack comes two days after seven Nazi police were killed and 27 others wounded by a massive car bomb attack on a police bus in Turkey's main southeastern city of Diyakbir, Bakir. Turkish junta authorities on Saturday detained the suspected perpetrator named as AC of that attack, which was claimed on Friday by the military wing of the PKK. The bombing, unlike previous recent attacks in Turkey, was not a suicide attack but remotely detonated, officials said at the time. Dogan said AC is believed to be the man recorded on security camera footage walking away just before the attack from a parked white car, which would later explode when the police bus passed. The Dogan report said nine other suspected of links to the attacks had been detained on Friday prior to AC's arrest and other violence blamed on PKK overnight. One civilian was killed, 18 people wounded in an attack on military substation in Kilstrape district of Madin province, the army said. The civilian killed was reportedly a Syrian who had been working on building site project. The PKK formally took up arms against the Turkish Nazi state in 84 in an insurgency that initially sought an independent Kurdish state for Turkey's largest ethnic minority, but which now focuses on autonomy and greater rights. It declared a truce in March 2013, but it collapsed last summer, and the government has since moved to eradicate the group's presence in the urban center in a relentless military campaign. Nazi President Erdogan said earlier this week that 355 members of the security forces had been killed in the fighting since then. He has also claimed 5,000 members of the PKK had been killed, but it was not possible to confirm that toll. Turkey has been shaken this year by two attacks in the capital, Ankara, claimed by Kurdish rebels that killed dozens and two deadly bombings in Istanbul, blamed on jihadists that targeted foreigners. Long live the PKK. Hey everybody, 
I stress, always be safe, stay on alert, and see you all on Wednesday. Bye-bye, folks.